when I'm getting ready, I'm always thinking about her and they run through in my mind certain words. Never become outraged. Always consider everything. Um, be a lady. Heather Mitchell's portrayal of the softly spoken judge flits through different phases of her extraordinary life. But having these photos is really, I love. <laughs> I love having these. In a one woman show, Mitchell also slips into other characters in the story. Oh, I always listen to Obama's voice beforehand, Clinton's voice. Miss Ginsburg, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, well, thank you so much for seeing me, President Clinton. It was all rather amusing, quite the cloak and dagger entry. Can you tell us about the origins of the play? Yes, well, Susie Miller, who's a phenomenal writer, Australian writer, she and I are very, very old friends. So we were talking one day, it was during COVID, I think, and it was a very casual conversation about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I had just done some more reading about her and felt there were so many things personally in her life that I sort of resonated with me. So we were talking about that as much as about her judicial position and what she's done for the world. And um, I think I very casually said, oh, gee, I'd love to play her. And Susie basically said, I'll write a play. I'll write your play. So what were the things that resonated in her life and your life? Well, firstly, I just was so in awe of her, um, not only with her judgments and the way she approached her role as a judge, um, and also the incredible ways she fought for women, not that I've done any of those things. But on a personal level, it sounds rather ridiculous, but you know, her husband's name was Marty, who was her lifelong partner, who was also an enormous support to her through her whole career, bringing up children, all of those things. My husband's name is Marty. She um, had cancer twice and I've had cancer twice. Um, I'm American and Australian, I have both citizenships, brought up in a Jewish family. My mother uh, died my last exam Mm, of, my, of my high school certificate as well, and her mother died then. Mm. So there were a number of things on the emotional side mm. of Ruth's life that it's I just really resonated with, and I feel like it really resonates with mm. other people. Anyone who's experienced illness or death or any of those things, people seem to resonate really strongly with, mm. yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life um, became the kind of passion mm. in every day of our lives. There is a lot of information about RBG out there. And um, I suppose for us, a really um, a driving part of the vision for this was to take that information into the theatrical world. Mm. I hope that we are able to give our audiences um, an understanding and an experience of Ruth that is, uh, is something more than what, what we can all experience when we open a book or listen to a podcast. Um, I suppose mm. it's the closest we come to being in the room with her yeah. when we're in the room with Heather as channeling. Her. The RBG character you play is is a, a creature of the stage. She's not. It's not a documentary. How did she evolve during the course of rehearsals and getting ready for opening night? So it was a very mm. exciting process, and certainly mm. one, not one that you just go. I'm learning my lines. I'm turning up, rehearsing, and it's on. It was very. It was interwoven with so many things. But what the overriding thing for me was that. People, I've spoken to a few people who've met Ruth mm. and they said the extraordinary thing about her, she, she was always interested in other people. She never spoke about herself. She was always saying, what are you doing? Where are you from? And what, what are your interests? So that really, just that piece of information even is so wonderful because it takes you away from thinking about yourself as an actor and makes you think always about that person. And that is a gift because then it takes the pressure off yourself and you think, what would Ruth do? The play was a truly collaborative experience from playwright Susie Miller, a former lawyer who recently brought her deep understanding of the law into the play Prima Facie. It also started in Australia, but has just completed a smash season in London's West End and is now moving to Broadway. It's not emotional for me, it's the game. But it was also a play that had to develop around Mitchell's second battle with cancer earlier this year and with director Priscilla Jackman's pregnancy. It was more than just a bit of life imitating art with this show and um, just as we came through the, the sort of the, the miracle and, and, and Heather's extraordinary um, strength um, with, the, with cancer, fighting cancer for the second time, I found out I was pregnant for the first and only time and um, I remember calling Heather and saying, you were the first person I told. I, think. I hope you told uh, your partner. He did know. He, he had something to do with it. He did know. Adelaide Ann came just around 
uh, the time we the opened, week. just before we opened, when we moved into the theatre actually. And, uh, and so she's listened to Ruth's voice all along. Somehow these things seemed appropriate when telling the story of a woman who finished her law studies while her husband battled cancer, she was raising two small children in the 1950s and had to storm all the gender battlements in her own quiet way. I notice every one of those little assumptions, not to harvest resentment, but to really notice, to observe them all. I but above all the came the law like and Beta Ginsburg's clear-eyed view of its role. ...by the separation of the judiciary and the executive. Well, one of the crucial moments in the play is when uh, she goes to see Barack Obama and the pivotal question is, should she stay or should she go? And she basically decides, or she tells him that she's going to stay on. And given what we know of uh, what she thought of Donald Trump, um, was that the right decision? But everything's in retrospect, isn't it? Like now that we know certain things, we go, well, she should probably have left. But at the time, she, I mean, the, in America, judicial judges are there for life. That is their right to be there for life. And she had that right. She also knew, she thought, we all did, that Hillary would get in. So in a way, the world was different at the time yeah. when she was um, gearing for a future that was not something she predicted. Isn't, isn't there another dilemma though here for her? as a woman on the Supreme Court bench, that even if she'd known what was going to happen, would, would, would she have? Would she yeah. have? I mean, now that you, you've, you've spent so much time I with know. her, what, what do you think she would have done? Look, I don't know. If she'd known that Trump would get in, she might have stayed <laughs> to make sure that she had something to say. I don't know. Susie Miller has said that, you know, Susie has a lot of legal friends and she has had some lawyer friends who've come to the show who are adamant that she should have left and uh, should have resigned and have changed their mind mm, after seeing right. the show, which was interesting. Why is it such an important story to tell now? And I think that accountability is something which is very um, in everyone's minds at the mm. moment, uh, both in politics and across the law. And a few young women have totally changed their view of what feminism has been about, which has been very gratifying. Um, I think it's just extremely relevant for men to hear this story um, because she also talks enormously about the men who've supported her in her life, not only her husband, her life partner, but yeah. also other men. So we have these three very different um, iconic men with Heather playing three presidents uh, that we meet through the course of the play who all represent very different forms of leadership and we're seeing them through the lens of Ruth Bader Ginsburg as well and so it allows us to really um, reflect on, on leadership as much as gender. Mm. She didn't lead with a loud voice. Mm. She led with uh, an incredible intelligence and grace to lead well is to not necessarily the loudest voice, but the, the best listener mm. and um, the person who can bring people to them and guide them. And I think that's what yeah. she very much did.